Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Guru Angoranga. This video is for someone named Nirosham Shiva Lingam on my Facebook list. He had some issues that he brought to my attention and he made a comment on one of the posts. So I'd like to read the comment and then try to address it if I can. Hopefully, you know, we could clear up some misconceptions and come to a, a better understanding of this divine philosophy. And hopefully I'll make you feel better by the end of this video. Nirosham Shiva Lingam writes, Shiva, the demigod. Some say that he's the expansion. It's hard for me to see the paper because it is bright light in my eyes. So now I'm looking at the paper and I'm literally blind. Let me do it this way instead. It says, Shiva, the demigod. Some say that he is the expansion of Lord Almighty Krishna. But Shiva is the demigod who is running this world, Kali Yuga, and other parts of the universes and lokas. And that is the reason... We are suffering. Remember that he gave boons to so many demons. Shiva is a demigod with a lot of unclean thoughts and ego and politics. Most of them don't know what Shiva is doing to this world and then the other parts of the universes. But still we see in India and in other parts of the world and Lokas, they are worshipping Shiva as the only supreme person. As states in the Gita, Lord Krishna said that Lord of Ignorance is Shiva, and we remember the great sage Brigu once said Shiga is a Shiva is a demigod with filthy thoughts and egoism and ignorance, as we know the ruling leaders in this world and other lokas is Shiva only, equals only the Supreme Personality of Godhead should kill the ignorance of Shiva, and then only the evil thoughts and the mode of goodness will come into existence. Now the world has been ruined because there is no proper ruler. The the Shiva and Kali are ruling the earth and other locusts. Only the supreme person should come and relieve the pious and then punish the evildoers. Jai Sri Ram, Jai Sri Krishna. All right. First of all, my battery is running dead. I'm running out of space. I don't even know if I'll be able to finish this video. <clears throat> Shiva the demigod. First of all, there's Vishnu Tattva. There's Jiva Tattva. And then there's Shiva Tattva. Srila Prabhupada teaches that Jiva Tattva applies to all living entities in the cosmos from the great Lord Brahma on down to the ant, you know, down to molecular life forms. These are Jiva Atmas. I'm a Jiva. You're a Jiva. We're regular living entities. Then you have Vishnu Tattva. Vishnu Tattva is any expansion, any direct expansion from Krishna or his direct incarnations. Shiva is neither Vishnu Tattva nor Jiva Tattva, meaning he's not a demigod. He's actually higher than the demi demigods. He's on a platform all by itself. He's higher than the living entities, but he's lower than Vishnu and his expansions and incarnations. Um, once again, it's hard to see because the light blinded my eyes. You said that Shiva is the demigod who's running this world. Okay, let's get into it. Shiva is like yogurt. Krishna is like milk. Milk is the source of all yogurt. Yogurt has specific duties. Yogurt can do many things, but it can't do everything that milk can do. Milk is more versatile. As such, to have someone that contacts this material energy, that is what Shiva's purpose is. Being the husband of Parvati or Durga, he is in charge of interacting with this material world. Shiva's energy is that of destruction. He controls the mode of ignorance. For the most part, he's not influenced by material nature. Yes, he has a tinge of material nature in him, but for the most part, he's constantly meditating on Vishnu. He's constantly meditating on Krishna and the divine ecstasy and bliss of his forms, names, qualities, and pastimes. So Shiva, yes, he is in control of the mode of ignorance. Generally, he does not fall under the mode of ignorance. But you could see the tinge of the mode of ignorance in Shiva for the mere fact that he's always meditating, he's always ignoring the world, he's always ignoring his wife. As a matter of fact, his wife created a child because of Shiva's ignorance. And it's not that Shiva is so ignorant, it's more like he's naive. He's so absorbed into the spiritual world that he's naive to the day-to-day -day workings of the material world. He has no interest in this temporary material abode. And actually, Shiva is called upon when it's time to destroy the universe, to annihilate the universe. Shiva is the one who runs the universal vacuum cleaner, which is why you always see the snake around his neck, which represents the, the, the beauty of dying 
time meaning time devours all things in the material world not the spiritual world but the material world all things will be devoured by time that's what the snake the spiral the coil around shiva's neck represents so when it's time for the universe to reverse its course instead of expanding when it's time for it to decrease when it's time for it instead of waxing when it's time for the universe to wane and to go back into the skin pores of vishnu that's when shiva whose name means auspicious, by the way. Shiva is not evil. He's not involved in ego or politics. Here's the catch. Shiva actually helps you to destroy the false ego. Does he bless demons? Yes. He also blesses devotees. Whoever comes to him, Shiva is known as the one who is easily pleased. So anybody who does some kind of austerity, you remember now, me, I have a choice. I could choose between blessing the devotees or kicking the demons, but, but, when it comes to certain higher beings, they give out boons to whoever approaches them with a form of devotion and austerity and penance. You could stand on one foot for 15 days with your hands in the air chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, or, or whatever you want. Om Klim Shreem Brzee, whatever you want. And if you complete your austerities, the demigods will bless you. They don't care uh, this one is a demon or this one is a devotee. Just as long as you do your austerities properly. So that's the key to getting anything from Shiva is perform I'm in the austerity that's pleasing to him. It doesn't matter if you're demon or devotee. Once again, these people's minds is bigger than mine and yours. There's, you remember, I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness is the type of people, as long as you go into their church, oh, they love you, they'll bless you. But if you stop going to their church, they turn their back on you, and you're no longer eligible for God's grace. To me, that's not very godly, but once again, I can't judge because I'm an imperfect human being. The Jehovah's Witnesses must know something that I don't know. So go ahead with that. Anyway, good. So, Kali Yuga. Don't mix up the spirit of Kali Yuga with Shiva. Kali Yuga is an individual who's in charge of this particular eon, this age, this age of Kali Yuga, which lasts 432,000 years. There's a being named Kali, and I'm not talking about the mother goddess Kali. I'm talking about a male being who particularly hides out in places where liquor is sold, houses of prostitution, wherever there's a meat slaughterhouse, and also he hides out in gold. It's so funny that when dynastic Egypt was founded, it was founded at the beginning of Kali Yug, and gold was so important in Egyptian society. So once again, Kali Yug is different from anything to do with Shiva, but of course Shiva's energy becomes more active in Kali Yug because that's the time for destruction and unraveling. Let's go on. And that is the reason we are suffering. Remember that he gave boons to so many demons. No. The reason why we are suffering is because of the threefold miseries. Adi Bhautika, Adi Yatmika, and Adi Daivika. Adi Daivika is nature, Daivi, the nature, the nature around you. It's also referring to supernatural energies and witchcraft. So there's demons and angels that can give you a hard time. That's Adi Daivik suffering. Adi suffering is suffering that's caused by my mind or my body or my intelligence or my false ego. For example, if you think that your boss is skimming money from your check, that's coming from the suspicions of your mind. So that's something connected to your body because you're suspecting your boss. But when you find out your boss is really skimming money from your check, then that's Adi Bautic, which is suffering caused by other living entities. So there's only really three causes for suffering. If you go through a fourth kind of suffering, which is transcendental in nature, understand that that is Krishna's pastime, and it doesn't apply in the material form of what we would say material suffering. So no. No, we're not going to blame the demons for our suffering. We're going to blame it on either nature and supernatural forces or our own activities, our own karma. Or if I stub my toe against a metal thing, it's going to break my toe and I'm going to feel pain. That's pain I cause myself. And then there's pain caused by other people like, you know, one man wants to feel like he's the dominant man of the planet Earth and he could go around and colonize all other countries and turn whoever he wants to be a slave and he could burn your men and cut off their, their genitals and he could rape your women and it's justified according to the rules of the Bible that he created and the slave ship that he created for your people. Okay, continuing on. Hmm. Shiva is a demigod with a lot of unclean thoughts. I got a problem with that because if Shiva has such unclean thoughts, then why does Mother Ganges flow through his head? When you see the dreadlocks that Shiva got, you see a wild, a water spout coming from his head. That's the Ganges River. The Ganges River is coming from the Karana Ocean or the Causal Ocean because Vishnu's toe breached the outer level of the cosmos and that ocean is actually crashing into this material cosmos. But 
it would destroy the three worlds. The entire universe would be destroyed by the force of the Karana or causal ocean. So Shiva, in his mercy, actually lets the Ganges River stop into his head, get caught up in his matted locks, and then it drifts down into the three worlds. So the presence of the Ganges River is constantly purifying Shiva. So even if he did have a tinge of unclean thoughts, naturally by coming in touch with the Ganges River, that's purified. And plus, a real Vaishnava like Shiva actually has the power to purify holy places. Because remember, holy places, people like me go there on pilgrimage to leave our sins at the Ganges River. We leave our sins at the temple, at the altar. We leave our sins at the lotus feet of the spiritual master. But a real holy person goes to those holy tirtas and actually draws up all of the sinful energy and leaves it cleaner than before. So we see a divine reciprocation of cleanliness going on with Shiva, although in his physical manifestation he's known as unclean. He hangs out in graveyards and puts graveyard ash all over his body and he hangs out with ghosts and demons. Actually, when people commit suicide or they die a violent death and they're disembodied suddenly, a lot of these ghostly beings are punished that they cannot uh, uh, re-inhabit a material body right away. So they got to go serve Shiva. They get sufficiently purified and then they take rebirth in a proper body. But most of the people hanging out around Shiva, you don't want to meet them in a dark alley because he's the lord of the mode of ignorance. Once again, so the ignorant living entities usually gravitate towards Shiva so that they could get their purification. Mm. Okay, so you said ego and politics, most of them don't know what Shiva is doing to this world and then the other parts of the universes, but we still see in India and other parts of the world and locus, they are worshipping Shiva as the only supreme person. Yes, because in a lot of the scriptures, it will allude to Shiva being the supreme person, but once again, we understand that Shiva is supreme in the material cosmos. He outranks even Brahma. He comes from the third eye of Brahma. He comes from the Ajna Chakra of Brahma. Sometimes your own children surpass you in greatness. So this should not be a hard mystery to understand. And once again, Shiva is a totally different being sent by Krishna to do specific jobs. As it states in the Gita, Lord Krishna uh, said that Lord of Ignorance is Shiva. We must remember the great sage Brigo once said. Now, remember with Brigo, right? We got to take everything with a grain of salt. Because Brigo, if I'm not mistaken, he only wanted to circumambulate around Shiva. That's disrespectful. When your wife is sitting right next to you, your spiritual master, whoever, somebody of honor. If I meet President Obama and Michelle Obama right now, right? And I just give him my respects and I act like I don't see Michelle Obama. Is that very respectful? No. But this is what Brigo wanted to do. He wanted to circumambulate or fly around in the form of a bee. He wanted to fly around Shiva only. His wife is right there. He didn't even want to give her that respect. He just wanted to worship Shiva only. Shiva was like, nah, you can't do that. So he sat close to his wife. And the bee still found the space to go around only Shiva. So you know what Shiva did? He combined his body with his wife so that Brigu would have to show honor and respect to his wife. And that's why you see in some Indian iconography, half of Shiva's body is Hari and half of his body is Hara or Hare. So you have Hari Hara, which represents the female and the male combined into one energy. So Brigu could not just disrespect. So you got to take everything with a grain of salt once again. Mm -hmm. Demigod for filthy thoughts and egoism and ignorance as we know the ruling leaders of this world and other locus is Shiva only. The rulers of this world are mostly Rakshasas right now. If you want more information on the Rakshasas, go to the conspiracy theorist people. They'll tell you about the Illuminati and the reptilian races. Yes, they are currently on the earth. Oh, something very interesting. Satya Yuga. During Satya Yuga, uh, most of the people on the planet were coming down from higher planetary systems. The highest planetary systems. During Treta Yuga, most of the people on the planet were still from the upper planetary systems, but it was a lower level of the upper planets. Then, during Dwapara Yuga, you had mostly people coming from earthly terrestrial systems, middle planetary systems. The beginning of Kali Yuga, something interesting happens. You have a mixture. So right now, for the last 5,000 years, you've had a mixture of people coming into this planet from upper planetary systems and hellish planetary systems, which is why you'll see so many people even born in the same family. Some people are demonic and other people are divine, and they coming from the same womb and the same family. So, but at the end of Kali Yuga, about more thousands of years from now, you'll see more people incarnating on this planet from the lower planetary systems. 
Okay, only the supreme personality of Godhead should kill the ignorance of Shiva and then only the evil thoughts and the mode of goodness will come into existence. Boom, we got a problem again. The mode of goodness is called Sattva Gunna. Sattva Gunna, Raja Gunna, which is the mode of fashion and Tamo Gunna, the mode of ignorance. These three modes are always interacting in the material world and they cannot be destroyed. You can be a mostly good person, but you always have a touch of ignorance and always have a touch of passion. You can be a totally ignorant person and always still have a touch of goodness. So what we want to do is actually transcend these three modes of material nature and actually go back into Vishuddha Sattva or the spiritual science, your spiritual original nature. That's what the Hare Krishna movement is designed for. So we're constantly chanting the names of Krishna because it pleases Krishna and it brings us back into the transcendental mode of goodness which is beyond the material mode of goodness material mode of goodness is nice but what happens with the people who live in the mode of goodness they start to think that they're entitled to something I'm entitled to live good because I'm educated you know a lot of people don't agree with the fact even with me my personal life right I work I'm not a rich guy I'm not a poor guy but there's a lot of people who feel I should be living better than I'm living uh, they have some dreams that I should be doing better and I don't mind living well but I don't want to be feeling like I'm entitled to that just because I learned one or two things and that's the problem with the elite class I'm talking about the elite learned I'm not talking about the elite Illuminati I'm talking about truly learned individuals they get attached to good living because they got their degrees you went to school for X amount of years so you feel you should live a certain way mm. That's a, a subject for a whole nother video. But no, nobody is entitled to anything except service.